Hey guys, thanks for tuning in here. I'm going to quickly take a look at when to use Q-test parameters, under what scenarios are a good fit. So in this example here, we have a S4 HANA login with different user profile script. If we look at the no parameters versions of these test cases, we can see that the traditional way of writing a test uh, step description would be to have the data hard-coded in there. In this example, we have six different user profiles we want to log in and verify on S4 HANA. And if we click through each of these tests, you'll see the same steps repeated with just different hard-coded data. Up here, we have a test case that we are going to parameterize with Q-test parameters. Some ideas of when you would want to use parameters are executing the same set of steps and you want to use different data sets. With Q-test parameters, you can create random data sets, you can have structured data sets, and you can have individual parameters. All right, thanks. Now we're going to have a look at how to create and manage parameters and data sets. In order to navigate to the parameters module, you want to open up the nine box menu right here and you'll see Q-Test parameters. If you click on that, it will navigate you to the parameter service. Some high level details about Q-Test parameters are they are global data sets that can be applied to any project. So we recommend creating and scoping parameters according to the projects in which they will need to be used in. In this case, we can also add identifiers. We're looking at the SAP parameters here. It is also a best practice to prefix your parameter names with a common nomenclature depending on the application under test, the team that's created that data, or the systems the data will be used in. An example of this is our SAP prefix right here. So if we wanted to use the identifier filter and type SAP and then apply that filter, we can go ahead and do that. There's also parameter statuses. If it was active, inactive, or if it's been archived and we want to keep its historical data. In this case, we have three different parameters for the scenarios that we looked at. User role, password, and username. If we look at the user role parameter section right here, we can add values by using this button right here. And every new line uh, of data that you enter, once you click OK, will be added as a new parameter. You can go ahead and remove parameters from this, or values from this parameter by using the check boxes right here. You can also view the projects that it's assigned to, the test cases that are leveraging this parameter, and any data sets that are used including this parameter. So what we have here is three parameters and now we want to make a data set for it. So we have this SAP user credentials data set right here. In order to create a new one, you simply click the create button and then you select the different parameter columns that you would want to add. And then you can manually select the data that you would want to add as well. If you want to add an additional column, you can click that button and select a new parameter. I'm going to close this one out and show you one that we already have created. So SAP user credentials, a little description about this data set. I've added the username, password, and role in the parameter columns. I can remove these individual data sets and I can manually set them. What I'm going to do right here is clear the values of this parameter data set. I'm going to leave the headers as I have them set and then I could manually select the different values that I would want to use in this parameter or I could use this generate option right here. There's a couple different uh, combinations of data generation you could use. In this case I want to use unique values because the user role password and username needs to match. If I were testing something like SKUs or configuration options for certain items where you could use random data sets for colors and sizings and structures, that's also a nice thing where you can generate unique random data set combinations. In this case I'll click generate on unique values and click OK and we will see we now have our data table with all of our different parameterized values. In the next portion of the clip, 
we're going to go ahead and show you how to leverage those parameters in your test cases, how to create runs, and some general best practices for that. All right, now we're gonna have a look at how to leverage parameters in your test steps when you're creating test cases. And then we're also gonna show how you can create test runs with parameterized data. So we have our SAP login and verify user role script. Again, this could just be the login scenario. Maybe you would actually consider calling this test as a step of your end-to-end -end scenarios. All possible ways to create reusability and modularization of test cases. In order to use a parameter, you're going to want to select the test step you want to leverage the parameter in, and you'll start by typing the at symbol. Once you've done that, you can start typing your parameter name. This again is why creating a parameter with a prefix is very helpful, because I can type SAP and we'll start to see all of the SAP related parameters. I'm going to do username, password, and user role. And once we click off this, we can see the blue hyperlinks to those individual parameters. By clicking that, it would navigate us to those. Uh, and when we're done, we can approve our test case. Make sure we save it and then approve it. And now we're ready to run this test case. We've already done the prerequisite steps of linking a user story that came in from Jira, building out our sprint and our execution hierarchy. Uh, we're not going to cover that in this video. And now we'll show you how to actually use your parameterized test cases in a test suite. So we have sprint nine right here. We have SAP parameter demo test cycle, and then we have a test suite. We'll select our test suite and we'll go ahead and click the add run button. And then we'll go to our test cases. There are several different ways you could add runs, uh, depending on the type of testing you're doing. In this case, we're just going to navigate through our test catalog to our SAP S4 HANA folder. We're going to go to our permission verification and parameterized test case. We'll click the checkbox and then click add. And we will see our create test runs with parameters window. There are several different ways you could do this. I'm going to show you the BNB uh, preferred way. We always like to choose the customized test run name, which allows us to easily identify which data set we're using in that parameterized version of the test run. We can leverage the test name by using a parameter value by the same way of typing at. And then in this case, we'll do user role dash and then our traditional test case name. We can choose to create our test run data manually by selecting the parameter name and the values individually. We can select randomized test data, or in our case, we're going to use a data set. After selecting our data set option, we're going to select the data set we want to use. And we're going to use SAP user credentials data set. This allows us to generate our data, a test run for each line of data that we want to leverage. So in this case, we have six rows of data in our data set. From row one to row six, we want to create a data, uh, parameterized test run for each of that. We'll go ahead and click preview, and you can see we've automatically created our parameter loadout right there. Once we click the add button, and then close out of this window, we're gonna see now we have six new test runs created with each of the individual parameterized data sets that we have. In this case, I'm going to do a quick run with test pad. And you can see how the parameterized data is represented in the test run and the test run history. So you always know what data was used during your parameterized test run. We'll go ahead and pass this really quick. We should, of course, probably enter an actual result. But for the sake of this demo, to keep it quick, we'll just go ahead and save go back to our parameterized test run and we can see that our test run log leveraged parameterized data. Thank you for watching. If you thought this was helpful, we'd love to hear 
some comments down below. Please like and subscribe and let us know what else you'd like to see. Thanks again for watching.